Standard 5th, Subject EVS 2, Chapter 10, Historic Period. We have seen in Lesson 2 that written records are available in the form of inscriptions, manuscripts, books, etc. for the historic period. In all ancient civilizations, the art of writing was developed. They full used fully developed scripts. So here in this picture, you can see some examples of scripts of the ancient period. In other words, with the rise of ancient civilization, the new stone age came to an end and the historic period began. So now let us understand what is culture. Humans and all other animals are dependent on their environment and nature for satisfying their needs. However, other animals do not cause any significant change in their surroundings. They do not harm or utilize the surrounding for their own benefit by making changes, any changes in them. For example, bears live in caves and monkeys live on trees. They do not have to build a separate home for themselves. But humans build houses. It means that we humans change the natural character of our surroundings to some extent. Humans do not eat their food in its natural form as other animals do. They roast or cook the food or in other words they process foodstuffs before eating them. They process many substances in a similar manner. So we use our environment not only for a house or for cooking food but for many other purposes. They work on stone metal etc to make tools and various objects the humans also make pots bricks and many other things from clay they obtain yarn from cotton and weave cloth from the yarn in short according to their needs they change the form of materials available in nature they need skills to do this they need to think and plan before they shape an object. Then they have to put in efforts to actually shape it. The tradition of thought, skills and efforts gave rise to various arts. Every generation handed over the knowledge of the artistic skills and traditions to the next generation. With this exchange of thoughts and ideas, language was enriched. The knowledge of various arts, skills and traditions inherited from generation to generation and the way of life founded on that knowledge is what we call culture. So now that you have understood what is culture, let us learn in detail about the ancient civilizations in the river valleys. Cultures which flourished in the new stone age were based on an agricultural way of life. Fertile soil and constant water supply are essential for growing good crops. Naturally, people in the new stone age established the village settlements on the banks of various rivers. You can see in the picture that various settlements were established near the river valleys. The new stone age cultures flourished along the river banks. In the course of time, the new Stone Age cultures gave rise to early civilizations. Increase in production due to various skills, the use of will, flourishing trade, use of well-developed scripts, etc. were the major factors responsible for the rise of the early civilizations. These civilizations came into existence in roughly the same period that is around 3000 BC in four regions of the world. So in this chapter, we are going to focus on these four regions where the ancient river valley civilizations originated. They are Mesopotamia and Egypt, the Indian subcontinent and China. The civilization in these four regions developed in river valleys. Hence, they are known as riverine civilizations. So which are the ancient riverine civilizations? Mesopotamia, Egypt, China and Harappa. So let us learn in detail about each one of them. The first one Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is the name of a region and not of any particular country. It means the land between two rivers. Ancient Mesopotamia was the land between the two rivers Tigris. 
So you can see here Tigris and Euphrates. These two rivers mainly flow through Turkey, Syria and Iraq. Ancient Mesopotamia had great cities like Ur, Uruk, Nippur etc. These cities were home to very prosperous cultures. Now that you have learnt about Mesopotamia, we will learn about Egypt. The river Nile flows through the eastern part of the Sahara Desert in the north of Africa. So in this map you can see in the north of Africa here we have Egypt and the river Nile here. Okay this blue part which is shown is river Nile. This map is also in your textbook for a clear view on page number 46. One of the ancient civilization flourished along its banks, along the banks of river Nile. It is known as the Egyptian civilization. The Nile gets flooded every year. The land along her banks has become very fertile because of the flood deposits. Also, ancient Egyptians used to build small embankments on the river to store the flood water. After the soil in the flood water settled to the bottom, the water was used for irrigation. So this way we have studied about two ancient riverine civilizations that is Mesopotamia and Egypt. Now we shall learn about the third one that is China. The ancient civilization of China developed and flourished in the valley of the Hangi river. According to the Chinese tradition, a king named Hangdi introduced agriculture animal husbandry, wheel carts and chariots, boats and clothing in China. Chinese people believe that his queen invented the technique of silk production and silk dyeing. Luo Yang, Beijing and Changyan were among the important cities of ancient China. So, this is all about ancient river, riverine civilization in China. Next, the fourth one is Harappa. The earliest civilization of the Indian subcontinent is known as the Harappan civilization. So you can see in the map here, we have Indian subcontinent here. And this yellow color part shows us the ancient urban civilization. So, it flourished in the Indus Valley. That's why it is also called as Indus Valley Civilization. Indus is the English word for the name Sindhu. Harappa in Punjab and Mohenjo-daro in Sindh are the two cities of Harappan Civilization to be discovered first. Now, they are in Pakistan. Lothal and Dholavira in Gujarat and Kalibangan in Rajasthan are among the famous cities of Harappan Civilization in India. Cities of this civilization are well known for the systematic town planning. So now let's uh, study in detail about their features. The houses were built in blocks as you can see in the picture. Created by parallel roads that crossed each other at right angles. Huge granaries and spacious houses were the special features of these cities. Okay, granaries to store the cultivated crops. There were bathrooms and latrines in every house and a covered drainage system which indicates a concern for public hygiene. So, so many years back in Harappa civilization also, people were concerned about public health and hygiene. There were carefully constructed private and public wells, one that you can see in the picture here. The cities were divided into four parts, each with a separate fortification. Now what is fortification? A defensive wall built to strengthen a place against an attack. So it is for protection. So this way there was a well developed city even dating back to earliest civilizations. The characteristics earthen pots of the Harappans are well baked, red in color and with beautiful designs like people leaves and fish scales. When tapped, these pots produce a metallic sound. 
The Harappan craftsmen were highly skilled in making bronze objects and beads from semi-precious stones of various colors. So you can see in the images here from the Indian Indus Valley artifacts. We have got some images. These things were in great demand in Mesopotamia. The names of Harappan gods and goddesses are not yet known. However, we know with the help of the Harappan seals. Here you can see a Harappan seal in the first picture. And clay figurines that they worshipped Pashupati. This is a clay figurine here. Pashupati means lord of all living animals and a mother goddess was worshipped. Now let's learn more about sports and entertainment. There were a variety of sports and means of entertainment in the ancient civilizations. Hunting and wrestling were the important ones. You can see a king hunting a lion image is shown in the first picture. Whereas in the second picture you can see wrestling, uh, a sculpture showing wrestling. Okay, so this way games played with the help of game boards and gamesmen were also popular. In ancient Egypt, people played a game that was similar to chess. This game was played with a game board and gamesmen. It is known as Sanat. In ancient China also, there were many games played with boards and gamesmen. So, archaeologists feel that these clay objects found in excavations of Harappan sites were used as gamesmen. So, in the picture, what you see is the Discovery of clay objects by archaeologists. Similar games were popular in Mesopotamia and Harappan civilization too. Many toys were found in the excavations of Harappan sites. They include whirls, whistles, rattles, bullock carts, animals and birds on wheels etc. Music and dance were also very important in early civilizations. They were an essential part of celebrating a festival. Ancient people used many types of musical instruments. In Mesopotamia, a strange instrument known as balak was very popular. Besides instruments like cymbals, rattles, you can see cymbals in this picture here, cymbals. Then we have rattle, okay. Then flutes, flutes were also used drums etc were also played the egyptian kings were known as pharaohs you can see the ancient egyptian pharaoh picture here in the first image on the occasion of certain festivals the pharaoh himself used to participate in the celebrations and dance the bronze image this bronze image of a dancer was found in the excavation at mohenjo-daro it is an evidence that dance was important in the harappan civilization as well Till now we have learnt in brief about the history of human civilization from the stone age to the early civilizations. Next year we shall study in detail the Harappan civilization that developed in the Indian subcontinent. We shall also study the ancient history of India. So this way we have completed chapter 10 historic period and also previous to portion for standard 5th. So, do watch the video, understand the chapter, read it from your textbook for a better understanding. Stay safe, keep healthy and thank you. If you would like to view EVS2 more chapters or even for EVS1, you can go to my channel named Snobia and you can subscribe, view the list. Uh, view the channel and from my playlist you will be able to see more chapters for EVS 1 and EVS 2. So make best use of this teaching aids. Once again a big thank you to all of you. Stay safe, stay healthy.